Matt, I'm Patrick. I'm Michael. Will from Jorge. Andrew. Okay, just a brief overview of what we're going to be discussing today. We're going to give a, a brief introduction to the spinal implants and the current uh, problems and methods that are, we have today, and then to how our solution uh, to those problems. And then we're discussing a little bit about gaze and the ABS policy. And then just the evolution into our final designs, uh, our testing, and then our conclusions and our analysis of uh, our test results. So the problem that we're dealing with is that millions of people are uh, afflicted with uh, chronic back pain due to uh, spinal deformations, uh, herniated discs, etc., and uh, these are usually corrected using uh, spinal implants. And the problem with those is that uh, usually made out of stainless steel, titanium, or uh, chrome alloys, and these require uh, one to two surgeries, and the, uh, to one to implant and one to remove, or they're going to stain your body for the rest of your life. So our solution to this problem is that, uh, to develop a biodegradable spinal implant that will be able to uh, degrade once uh, it's implanted. And uh, this will eliminate the cost of for <coughs> patients and doctors for one surgery, and it will uh, degrade as the body heals. And so the material that we're, we're going to be looking at is um, magnesium. Um, and just here are some of the uh, physical properties, and we used it for its biodegradability. And it has um, a normal uh, degradation rate of so the point of five milligrams per centimeter. Our design cost of focus primarily on the incision portion of the surgery, and we wanted to make sure that we met two criteria. One was that none of the implants had sharp edges, and also that the implants of uh, the rod gave implant screws to follow the flaw specifications. The rods were to be six months in thickness, which was then also a 903 point vent test for the cage to be able to have um, compartments for the scaffold that helps promote bone growth, and to extend a compression of newtons. We also the plate to extend a compression of newtons and the screws to have. Um, we want to apply the torque of 100 newtons for the screw to not break off and also for the threading to not break off during insertion. So this original screw head design that we had and the maximum pressure that we can see is 250 megapascals. And by modifying the design, we're able to reduce it to 210 by rounding it off. Um, for the screw threading, we originally had it as a block and the pressure distribution um, was rather high and the maximum pressure was 2,200 megapascals. By writing off um, the threading, we're actually able to reduce that to 1,600. And uh, for the cage, um, originally the compartments were about 10 uh, millimeters in diameter, and the maximum pressure was about 6,200. But by reducing the, the compartments of the scaffold, we're actually able to reduce the maximum pressure to 750. And for the plate, for the compression, it was not a problem. For 900 newtons, we were able to get um, a maximum pressure of 3 megapascals. And for the rock three-point vent test, um, we were actually able to get about a, a 130 megapascals of um, pressure. And to figure out of the safety of uh, each one of the implants, we use the safety of fact, the factor safety, which is you take the yield strength of the material divided by the, the maximum load. So we went ahead and took each one of the, the maximum loads of each one of them and divided it um, by, we use the, the yield strength divided by the maximum loads of each one of the images and we were able to get the following factor of safety. So, um, in terms of the machine, we, we ran across uh, a few problems. Uh, the, machine, the machines that we got, uh, we went to, uh, didn't have the necessary machine, uh, machine to, machines to design our actual parts. So, uh, because of this, we had to simplify our, our actual parts. Uh, this hopefully we would want to make it cheaper and the, uh, have, it, uh, have a quicker turnaround. Uh, this is in turn that uh, led to a lot of several features. So, as you can see here, um, we had a lot of before and after Basically, nothing's really changed. Uh, however, when you go to the, to the gauge side, as you can see, there are uh, teeth and there's a slight curvature around the gauge. However, once we go form machine, we actually lose that uh, lose those teeth. Now, the important part about this is that uh, they uh, they um, they hold um, to the to the vertebrae, so um, it doesn't loosen loosen up or fall out of themselves. And then for the plate, um, again. You see a slight curvature of the plate uh, that needs to go to the actual plate. It's more flat. Um, here we, we lose the contouring uh, that, that allows 
Because um, when they were doing, we were doing a compression test. Um, the uh, the safety mechanism already um, set in, um, so it could actually compress more. But we didn't have a, a large enough um, base for the uh, cage to um, to be to put into the uh, the machine. Um, the next thing we did was we 
we uh, did a three-point vent test on the six millimeter diameter rod. Um, we did that for both ABS plastic and uh, magnesium. Um, oh, uh, something I forgot to mention, but ABS plastic, when it prints out, it, it layers it. So we wanted to have different orientations of these layers to see, um, because some um, the layers, how they're oriented, um, it, it would change how much uh, force it could handle. Um, so as you can see, when, the, when it's uh, layered, um, according to its like to the cross sections, um, if it's going like this, sorry, um, if it applies force, it'll, it'll easily split. So it has a, a much lower force that it can handle. Um, if it's going lengthwise, when you're pushing down, it'll it'll be able to take a lot more force on it. So we got a about a load of uh, 17 pounds force. Um, for the magnesium rod, we it was able to withstand about 200 pounds of pressure, which um, actually exceeded our expectations. We thought it would be a lot weaker. Um, the next thing we looked at was the ABS plate. Um, we did a compression test on it. Again, we looked at the, uh, we oriented it in the printer so that we had different layers of it. Um, lengthwise, it was much stronger. It uh, was able to withstand 48 um, pounds of force. Um, when it was layered going along the width, uh, it only withstood 17 pounds of force. Um, and we also looked at the pedicle screw. Um, again, was this, this was similar to the rod. Uh, we layered it according to the uh, cross sections and according to the length. Um, cross section uh, was weaker as we expected, five pounds, but only stood about six pounds of force. Uh, lengthwise, it was good a, a lot more, about 22 pounds of force. So, we can conclude that we tested the magnesium rod. Um, we can conclude that it can achieve, the t we, we found that it can achieve the desired load of about 200 pounds or 900 newtons. Um, but it did not meet the safety factor that we would have liked, a safety factor of about seven, eight um, plus. Um, would be ideal for a medical device, medical implant. However, we only achieved one of about two or three. Um, the ABS plastic cage um, was impressive. It, even though it was plastic, it could withstand the uh, 200 pounds of force that we required it to. Um, and again, it did not reach the max compression, so it could go even um, further and take even more force. Um, so as far as are these feasible designs, can we be, can we use them as magnesium implants? Are, are, fabricating them out of magnesium. Um, right now, all we know is that magnesium is the only feasible design because that's the only one we actually had made out of magnesium. Um, the cage seems feasible because we use a weaker plastic, a weaker material than used plastic and was able to actually withstand um, the amount of force that we wanted it to. Um, and since magnesium is much stronger, we are, we're gonna say that it's probably feasible, but we would also like to um, use magnesium to test it. Um, as far as the screw, uh, we couldn't actually thread it into bone because it was made out of plastic. It wasn't. It, would, it wouldn't be able to actually screw into the bone itself. So we weren't able to actually conclude if these were uh, the, the plate, the screw, or the oh, the ABS rod were feasible. Um, as for the future, um, we would like to. One thing that we would like to do to prevent degradation um, is to apply calcium phosphate, also known as a hydroxyapatite. Um, this can be coated around the uh, implants to actually increase the, uh, the resistance to uh, degradation in the body. Um, and what's unique about this is um, during the process, they can actually um, kind of manipulate the process to see how, uh, to see, to actually um, change how long or how much resistance it can um, withstand for degradation. Um, and finally, we'd like to produce um, are designed using a uh, magnesium alloy, AZ91D, which is 9% uh, aluminum and 1% zinc uh, alloy in magnesium. Uh, we'd also like to test the mechanical and degradation um, properties of these uh, implants. And is there any questions? Just a minute for questions. Can you guys go back to your safety factor slide? How do these safety factors compare from your uh, theoretical testing compared to known implants made out of such as like titanium or other um, materials? Yeah, titanium materials, those have uh, safety factors of 10 plus, they're really strong. Um, we'd like to get a safety factor that high, of, but magnesium is uh, softer and it's a little weaker. Um, so we have to you know, try to change our design some more to achieve that safety factor. 
do you feel like those safety factors are enough to be able to be used within? Um, well, construct safety factors used in construction is generally generally around two. Now, if you want to, your body, of course, it's you want a safety factor that's much higher because you're putting it yourself. Um, so, I I would be safe maybe saying around six minimum. How would you get your design to reach that level of safety? Tapering the shaft actually um, alleviates some of the force that it experiences while um, during installation, um, which is being torqued, um, some of the shear stresses. Um, and also the the, um, the threading, we'd like to maybe round it off a little or change the angles and increase the, the width of those. Move on to the next one. 